okay so as we were understanding the design philosophy so here comes the next thing which is a load structural members must be designed to support specific loads loads are those fact forces for which a given structure should be proportioned uh, so these are basically the demand parameter in general loads may be classified as dead or live now dead loads include the weight of the structure and any permanent material placed on the structure such as tiles roofing materials walls dead loads can be determined with a high degree of accuracy from the dimensions of the elements and the unit weight of materials on the other hand live loads are all other loads that are not dead loads they may be steady or unsteady or movable or moving they may be applied slowly suddenly vertically or laterally and their magnitude may fluctuate with time so this is an example of uh, types of loads acting on structure uh, as you can see that uh, on the, the the dead load of the roof and there is a dead load of snow uh, on the on the roof so basically the snow is not the permanent dead load so it will be there for some time and then it will be uh, removed so we term it as a live load also the wind load acting at the roof is also uh, a live load right the the people and the furniture inside the house is also live load the water stored is also live load on the other hand the the uh, weight of the structural elements and the structure itself it is classified as dead load uh, the hydrostatic and soil pressure is acting at the uh, uh, foundation or at the uh, basement of the structure right in general live loads include the following occupancy loads for example people furniture and goods forces resulting from wind action and temperature changes the weight of snow if accumulation is prob probable the pressure of liquids or earth on retaining structures the weight of traffic on a bridge and dynamic forces for example the impact force the earthquakes or blast loading now the ACI code does not specify loads on structures however occupancy loads on different types of buildings are prescribed by IBC 2012 as we discussed previously that IBC is International Building Code and the American National Standards Institute so ACI took the loading from these two standards some typical values for the loads are shown in table 1 and the table 2 shows the weight and specific gravity of various materials now this is your table 1 which gives you uh, the type of occupancy for example assembly hall hospital hotel housing institution library office building and the contents for example if you are sitting in the library and you are in the reading room then the dead load will be 60 uh, sorry this is a live load not the dead load this is the 60 psf pound per square feet okay and if you are in the stack room the live load will be 150 psf in the stack room so it varies uh, with the contents and with the occupancy as well uh, similarly the table 2 uh, the density and specific gravity of various materials are uh, provided for example the reinforced concrete has a density of 150 pcf pound per cubic feet right and its specific gravity varies between 2.3 and 2.5 so you can pick uh, density and specific gravity of your concert material and you can use it in the calculation to uh, calculate exactly the dead load of the uh, structural elements now safety provisions in the strength design method uh, this is the uh, uh, method that has uh, uh, adopted by ACI the member is designed to resist factor loads which are obtained by multiplying the service loads by load factors right so different factors are used for different loadings because dead loads can be estimated quite accurately their load factors are smaller than those of live loads which have a high degree of uncertainty so the load factor is basically representing the amount of uncertainty in the variation of the uh, of the applied loads several load combinations must be considered in the design to compute the maximum and minimum design forces the reduction factors are used for some combinations of loads to reflect the low probability of their simultaneous occurrences for example it is not possible that the uh, snow is there and also the the rain is also uh, uh, occurring at the same point and there is a 
high speed wind because uh, with the high speed of wind the snow will melt down and there will be no snow load so simultaneous occurrence uh, is also uh, considered in the reduction factors in addition to load factors the aci code specifies another factor to allow an additional reserve in the capacity of the structural member and we will discuss it later first let me show you the load combination for example the first one uh, it is from the aci 318 uh, it's a 2019 edition which is the latest one it is a table 5.3.1 and uh, it says that the first combination is 1.4 dead load and here the primary load is dead load okay so you can use this combination or you can use this combination which is 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load plus 0.5 into roof live load or snow load or uh, rain load so here the governing or the primary load is the live load because you can see the factor 1.6 right similarly there are other combinations where the primary load varies for example here the uh, primary load is the roof live load or the snow load or the uh, rain load here it is wind here it is earthquake wind and earthquake so these are different load combinations that are used as we discussed here right the load factors and the load combinations right now we talk about the second thing which is the strength reduction factor as we discussed here that the additional reserve in the capacity of the structural member so depending upon the the type of uh, stresses that the uh, element has been subjected to we reduces its capacity because uh, if you can see here it is also from the aci 318 it's 2019 edition it's table 21.2.1 which is uh, termed as strength reduction factor phi and we use it uh, uh, to reduce the uh, capacity uh, because uh, uh, there are some uncertainties and uh, we do not want uh, to be in an ambiguous form uh, we, we want to be crystal clear about our structural design so if you are designing uh, uh, the shear then the strength reduction factor is 0.75 that is you are reducing your strength from 100 to 75 uh, in the meanwhile if you are uh, de dealing with the uh, fluctuate so the uh, factor is 0.9 it means that you are only reducing 10 percent so why this is so because the fluctural behavior is known much uh, more accurately than the shear behavior and uh, these uh, reduction factors are simply based on that thing okay so the nominal strength is generally calculated using an accepted analytical procedure based on statistics and equilibrium however in order to account for the degree of accuracy within which the nominal strength can be calculated and for adverse variations in materials and dimensions a strength reduction factor phi should be used in the strength design method right just like we uh, saw it on the previous slide now to summarize the above discussion the aci code has separated the safety provision into an overload or load factor and to an under capacity so you are increasing the load and you are decreasing the capacity a safe design is achieved when the structural strength obtained by multiplying the nominal strength by the reduction factor phi exceeds or equals the strength needed to withstand the factored loading so in this equation mu is your demand which comes from the structural analysis and mn is your nominal fluctual capacity and phi is that reduction factor so you are reducing your nominal strength capacity by some certain amount and you want that this reduced capacity should be greater than or equal to your demand okay and uh, same is for the uh, shear now structural concrete concrete elements structural concrete can be used for almost all buildings where sing, whether single or multi story the concrete building may contain some or all of the following main uh, structural elements for example the slabs which are horizontal plate elements and they carry the gravity loads as well as lateral loads the beams which are long horizontal or inclined members their uh, depth and width are limited their main function is to support the loads coming from the slabs the columns that are supporting the beams or slabs and uh, they are the axial uh, axially loaded elements the frames is it is a combination of uh, beam and column or it is a combination of slab beam and column right the footing they are supporting the columns the walls are vertical plate elements resisting gravity as well as lateral loads as in the case of basement walls shear walls the walls used for the lift 
stairs are provided in all buildings either low or high rise so these are the structural elements that are present in almost all types of structures and you need to understand the design of these elements uh, in detail so the structural concrete design comprises the first step in the building design is the general planning which is carried out by the architect right uh, because he determined the layout of each floor of the building now uh, after this the structural engineer then determines the most adequate and economical structural system and that structural system is based on the materials available in that area and the soil condition and to ensure the safety and stability of the building. So this result is normally achieved by five steps. Number one is idealizing the building into a structural model of load bearing frames and elements. Number two is estimating the different types of loads acting on the building. Number three is basically the demand calculation which is performing the structural analysis using computer or manual calculations to determine the maximum moments, shear, torsional forces, axial forces and other forces. Number four is design which is proportioning the different structural elements and calculating the reinforcement needed and number five is producing structural drawings and specifications with enough details to enable the contractor to construct the building properly so uh, as far as we are discussing the accuracy of calculations so exact calculations to determine size of the elements are not needed uh, for practical size of a beam column or slab the dimensions should be approximated to nearest one or half of an inch moreover the steel bars available in the market are limited to specific dias and areas so the designer should choose a group of bars from the table with an area equal to or greater than the area obtained from calculations. Also the design equations in these lectures will be based on the SCI code or approximate. Therefore for a practical and economical design it is adequate to use four figures. Now what are four figures? Uh, uh, as an example just see that for forces you can use 28.45 kips or 2845 pounds or 567.8 kips which is four figures right? For force per length, it is also uh, a four figure. For length or width, it is also a four figure. For areas, it is four figure. But for strains, it is a six figure. Why? Because let me explain here. For strains, use five or six figures because strains are very small quantities measured in a, measured in a millionth of an inch. For example, strain of point triple zero three five eight inch per inch. So stresses are obtained by multiplying the strain with the elastic modulus of the material which is a high magnitude which is uh, for instance for steel it is uh, 29,000 kip per square inch right. So any figure less than 5 or 6 figures in strain will produce quite a change in stresses therefore we use this strain we present it in a 6 uh, figure digit right. right? So this is what accuracy of calculation means in uh, reinforced concrete design. Uh, these are some of the examples of high-rise uh, concrete buildings uh, constructed from 1965 till 1983 in uh, United States and these are the pictures these are purely reinforced concrete structures no pre-stressed is used in these structures uh, these are some more pictures from, from the uh, uh, structures presented in this table these are some bridges and these are the references that I have used. So thank you very much and we'll see you in the next lecture. Take care. Bye-bye.